This case is a male neutered seven year old miniature schnauzer with a history of diarrhea and vomiting. So here we have um, a cranial abdomen view where we can see um, the diaphragm along here. This is the chest cavity and we can just see the heart beating in here. This hypoechoic structure here is the liver and we can see a little bit pocket of free fluid there and possibly some in the cranial part of the abdomen also. And here we're fanning through and it becomes more clear that there is free fluid surrounding the liver here. A little close up of that um, so we've got mesentery here and we've got the edge of the liver and then this anechoic um, content here is free fluid. Here we've got the gallbladder, the liver is hypoechoic um, and we can see that because the portal veins are standing out more obviously than they would do normally. A transverse view of the liver fanning through so we have a horizontal line of the diaphragm and at the end of the loop we can see the heart. Another view of the liver where we can see a bit of free fluid between the liver and the diaphragm. This is the heart beyond. Just measuring the free fluid um, can give us an indication of how, uh, how much there is and also we can um, quantify if it is changing over time. Fanning through the liver again here. Here we're looking at the stomach. So this is the stomach wall, this is the gas in the lumen and the stomach wall is very thickened um, so we'd normally expect that to be um, closer to the three millimetres and here we've got it at seven millimetres. Another view of the stomach here with the, some rugal folds and we're just fanning down towards the pylorus there. Here we have the spleen with some splenic vessels, a much more homogeneous structure than the liver um, and uh, we can, we're looking up towards the splenic head here. Moving down the splenic body, this spleen looks very normal here. The left kidney we can see here as the cortex medulla's in here and this is the peripelvic tissue. We're just measuring the length of it at 4.4 centimetres. We're fanning all the way through. We can see little pockets of free fluid around here too. So there's a, a big triangular anechoic content here which is free fluid. So here we have the left kidney in transverse here. Got the cortex, medulla, and the pelvis area here. We're following the aorta caudally um, to look for the left medial iliac lymph node. So here's the aorta, this is the external iliac artery, and we're fanning in this region to look for the uh, left medial iliac lymph node. There's none obvious here, so we presume that's normal. Now we're following the aorta cranially, we can see the renal artery leaving the aorta here, so we know we're in the region of the left adrenal around here. And here we have the left adrenal with the cranial pole and the caudal pole. We can see pockets of free fluid in all these images too. So now we're looking at jejunum, so we've got a transverse loop of jejunum here, we can see some peristalsis in this um, loop of intestine, and we can also see free fluid in the abdomen around the intestines here. We're measuring the jejunal wall here, that looks very normal with a thick mucosal layer and a normal submucosa muscularis and serosal layers. And at um, four millimetres, uh, just under five millimetres, um, it's slightly thickened, but um, the wall looking much more normal than the stomach wall there. Looking at more loops of jejunum and seeing that surrounding uh, free fluid. Also have the bladder here in the caudal 
image. Here we have a closer up of the bladder, fairly empty and small, but the um, bladder wall is still very, very thin. Just fanning cordially to the prostate, not very obvious in this neutered male. Here we have another loop of jejunum in longitudinal, um, a, a more normal measurement there and very normal looking wall. Here's a jejunal lymph node. They tend to be quite long um, and mildly hypoechoic compared to surrounding tissue. It should be under a centimeter in dogs, which this is well under. Here we've got the vessel that runs between the jejunal lymph nodes. And we can see one lymph node up here and one uh, just below it when we fan through here. Measuring the jejunal lymph node again. We turn the dog over and we're looking at the diaphragm, uh, the gallbladder here. There's a little bit of sludge in there. The wall is quite hyperechoic, but I feel that that is due to the liver being so hypoechoic in this case, rather than there being too much um, to say about the gallbladder. Um, there appears to be a little bit of sludge in there too. The right kidney, seen here. Uh, measuring similar to the other side, looking north. the duodenum. So we've got this nice straight loop of intestine that's very superficial, very close to the body wall, uh, measuring um, a, a, a nice normal thickness there, and the wall, I reckon, looking normal. So this is in transverse the duodenum. So we've got the lumen in the middle, we've got, then got the mucosa on both sides, submucosa and thin muscularis and thin serosa and on the side of the duodenum we can see this triangular structure and it's a little bit highlighted because there is free fluid in the abdomen so we can actually see the pancreas here the right limb of the pancreas sort of floating around in this ascites There we go, we're measuring the right limb of the pancreas there. We can also see this anechoic tube that runs through the pancreas, and that is the pancreatico duodenal vein. So here is the area that around the ascending colon, and we saw this dilated area um, of, of intestine here. Again, we can see this dilated loop of intestine here. Here we can see the uh, cordovina cava closest and the aorta, and where they are separating, moving cranially in the abdomen, we can see the right adrenal here, uh, measuring at 4.92 millimeters. Here we can see that right adrenal. So we've got the caudal vena cava coming down here, we've got the aorta here, we can see the left renal artery and the cranial mesenteric and the celiac arteries there. We can even spot the left adrenal there and then the right adrenal over on this side. So in this case, we found a moderate amount of free fluid seen throughout the abdomen. The mesenteric fat appeared a bit hyperechoic and reactive. The ascending colon and the ileocecocolic junction appeared a bit dilated, but no obvious obstruction was seen on an ultrasound. On this dog, an exploratory laparotomy followed and histology was samples were taken from the small intestine. And that found that there was a chronic moderate to marked lymphoplasmacytic and neutrophilic enteritis with villus stunting and lymph angectasia.